Hey guys, we are out here at UVU. I'm talking a little quieter, sorry for the close camera, but we're at UVU right now live and Rafael Pons from the Photo Pills app team is right there inside. I'm gonna let you watch this video. You guys can follow along with us. Sun, moon, and maybe our fields are for okay. I'm on the spot. What's gonna happen? Uh, the other day I went. Uh, the other day I went to Bishop with the photographers, and uh, Bruce Leon asked me just you know, wanted to shoot the uh, petroglyphs yes. in the Milky Way, and it's uh, the shop was it seemed impossible, but Bruce Leon with them I went to Raleigh View found a really nice spot to shoot the pepper leaves. And he got, let me show you what I have here. Bruce Leonard is using for a field rod for planning that. This shot, for example, I don't know if I'm away, but there is a wall here. So you just got on the wall and kneeled <laughs> and saw that the Milky Way was in the spot. You wanted. Yeah, I didn't see the shot beside. So, uh, and this was like 2 a.m. Uh, 2 p.m. He got when we came back and he got this shot. 2 p.m.? No, he, we, when we scouted the, oh, the location. Oh, oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. So like different sites you can go. So we use sort of bills to know which one to plan the shop for the night. Yeah. Yep. I'm sorry, can you use the microphone? It's not working. Let me move this. Microphone? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Okay, so now did it come to be at your height? Yeah. Where you're talking uh, uh, to it? Like this? Yeah. Yes. yes. It really yeah. requires you to okay. kiss it practically. Okay, <laughs> that's gonna be awesome. <laughs> Thank you, the other one with my finger. <laughs> no, you don't have to hold it. Yeah, I'm gonna let go. Go down. So you'll be able to use the app. Perfect. The yeah. Awesome. That it is. is. I yeah. need to kiss it. Thanks for asking. Uh, Thank you. Thanks for letting me know. Sometimes I won't. Great. You, you need to tell me if I'm running out of time because. You got it. Your clock up there says 9.41 a.m. Is that Menorca yeah. time? No, because it is when you plug the phone, <laughs> oh. every time it's plugged on the You got 10 time. minutes. I'll keep you on track. Okay, I see that's clock now. By the way, hey, yeah, Kirk. Uh, yeah, I just want to make sure that uh, you don't get too crazy about the planner. When you're on the spot, you can use the sun instead of moon and like the articles uh, to plan sunsets, moon shots, or the other way. And uh, for example, with the sun build, what I use, apart from you know getting all the uh, light information of the day here. All the major events, like golden hour, twilight, sunrise, sunset, moonrise, moonset, and, the, and even the Milky Way, uh, visibility times. You know, when the galactic center becomes visible and becomes invisible. I love the AR view because these fields, the three fields I mentioned, the sun, moon, and Milky Way, work offline. We help without internet connection, so when you're outside or traveling, you can. No, for example, you have a building, a mountain, you can just change the time and know when the sun is hiding behind the building or behind the mountain. This is very powerful. Imagine that you are you know, in Rome and want to shoot the, uh, the sunset uh, with the Coliseum, you're in front of the Coliseum, you don't know when is the best shooting spot. You just pull the screen out, know where the sun is and where it's gonna set, so you know where to go to shoot the sunset. That's uh, the power. It works offline, and because you know, it only takes the, the the position of the GPS of your phone and the time uh, that the phone has set. In the moon build, one thing I like is the calendar. You have like many options at the bottom. See, all the screens have like options at the bottom, hidden options. Here you'll find the AR button, but also the uh, the calendar. And uh, the current date is, uh, you'll see, uh, point out with the blue circle. But if you scroll down, you have the supermoons in yellow. 
So you want to find the moon, the super moon. You have the super moon states in the in the calendar. Ooh, and now we hear what? Sorry. I was just like, ooh, New Year's. <laughs> yes, oh yeah, yeah, that's gonna be a tough one. <laughs> <laughs> and now you wanna, you could send the date to the planner. You wanna put money with the planner. You just select tap on the moon you wanna plan. And now you have the action button. Yeah, the button. You tap on action, and then you can uh, either set, set an alert to your calendar, or send it to to the planner. And the date in the planner will be set to the third of December, so you can start planning the, the moon. But we'll go to the planner afterwards. Okay, so more pills. Five more minutes. Five minutes. Oh, awesome. <laughs> all that's all I need. <laughs> I'm sorry, how did you send that to the planner? You tap on the action button. Yes. And then uh, send to the planner. You have here an item. Maybe it's hidden. Well, you can. You can good. I'll find it. Yeah. <laughs> it just didn't come up automatically. Oh, save image. Oh, there he is. Okay. Can you select it first? More brief. Yes. So you, that what, what was happening is that you were on the wrong screen. You were on the calendar. So okay. you need to select the date first, and yes. then uh, send it to the planner. Gotcha. Quick question. Yes. On the when you click the, the super moon, it goes to, to this section. Yeah, it gives you the information it on the date. It says at 8:48 a.m., 99.6%. Does that mean like that's the time to shoot it at? No, it's just the time of the the, the moon, the face of the moon. You know, uh, the time to shoot it. You need to calculate it with the planner because you're going to be showing when it's setting or when it's rising. Yeah. So you're going to need the planner to plan the shot. This is for okay. When is the super moon? It's uh, in the, the third of December. You send it to the planner and then you start planning here. Do you guys all know what it means by super moon? It's a period yeah, in time where we're actually got. It, say that again. It's a farmer's moon. Farmer's moon, a super moon. It's when it's closest to the Earth, so it'll be the largest. So a supermoon period is when it's actually at apogee or perigee. I always get in backwards, I think it's perigee. perigee. You'll have to check yes. my Latin or whatever that is. You'll apogee or perigee, perigee I think it is. It, when yeah. it's closest to the Earth, it's biggest. It's, but it's not always a full moon situation. So that's why you saw that supermoon right there had a little bit of a waning gibbous, because it wasn't closest during the actual point of full moon. So sometimes they time out exactly. And then when they get that time out, they're like, it's really big and they're really close. Yeah. You get a super moon. But actually, there's not that much difference. You know, it it's so tiny. tiny. So a tiny, but uh, uh, it's true that it is uh, larger. That's why it's always so disappointing when people get excited on the news about the super moon, go outside, look at it, and people expect double the moon. <laughs> they're like, no, it's kind of the same. Is there an opportunity where we can kind of then go through planning the super moon? I don't want to hijack it right now. But no, but tomorrow. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, perfect. Actually, now it's, uh, it's going to be about flying in Midway, right? Oh, yeah. But give me a second to check the one. Oh, you have plenty. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the first, uh, this first half an hour is all about oh, helping you find. This lady has a question. Oh, cool. So, once you've found, you clicked on the super moon that you want and you get to this thing, yeah. do you click save? Well, no, you need to plan it. But you plan it and then you click save? Oh, yes. Go ahead, you can take some time and show that. Yeah, for example, if I want to plan the super moon, it's going to be uh, take me, like, two hours to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe don't take that time. <laughs> That's a tough question, you know. Uh, planning the moon is the most difficult part. But what you have to, okay, I'm going to switch off the Milky Way planner. So I suggest uh, to plan a shot. First, you need to bring this red pin to the location you want to study a shot. Then you set the time, the, the date of the shot. If you know the date, right here, using the time bar, it's the 3rd of December. 
And on the map, you see the, the, super, the moonrise and moonset directions, which are the, the light blue line is the moonrise direction, and the darker blue line is the moonset direction. Oh. So you know where the moon is going to be rising and setting. And based on these lines, you can choose the first estimation or first assessment of the shooting spot. Imagine that you have, I don't have any subject here, but if I want to shoot the, the moonrise above this lake, Utah Lake, I know that I can need to go to the other side of the lake, because I'm following this direction, right? Yeah. I'm standing here, the moon is gonna be rising in this direction. Mm. At what time you have it on the top panel? You can swap the panel by, and this panel gives you the sun, moon, uh, rise and set times. So on the map you have the directions where the sun and moon will rise and set, and on the top panel you have the time. So the moon is rising, on the 3rd of December at uh, 22 minutes to 6 p.m. So if I'm here on the shooting spot where I ride the Red Pyrenees, I'm gonna see the moon rising if there is not any mountain blocking my horizon. I'm gonna be seeing the moon rising in the direction of the light, blue light, the big one. How do you get those, those um, red, are you not seeing them on your planner? Yeah. You see the the circles? Yeah, you need to switch from the Milky Way planner to the to the that you just yeah. What was the skinny blue line? The skinny blue line is the position of the moon for the selected time. So it's curved in there. So it's uh, two a.m. So you can change the time by swiping on the time bar. And it gives you a position of the sun and moon for the slight date and time. But the most important lines at the beginning are the sun rise and set, set moon rise and moon set directions because they are the first assessment for where to stand to see the moon rise and moon in one direction. So it's all about you know finding your shooting spot. So the moon. Imagine that you wanna you wanna see the moon rising aligned with this triangle here. Yes, setting. I just need to move the red pin. Yeah, that would be yeah. right? So I know that, okay, the moon is rising, aligned with this triangle here. And at what time I need to be there? You have the time on the top panel. So it's, uh, yep. That was, which is the date. At 5.38 p.m., yeah. the moon will be rising in that direction. And we'll get a lot of chance to practice with this tomorrow, too. Yeah. So you'll be able to learn yeah. these colors, the quick guide. You'll be able to actually see it in practice with more of a hands-on with us with you. So you'll have a chance. Question yeah. back there, is that? So just a reminder, just let so everyone know, the, the moon rise on horizons at 5.38, but because we have the UNS, yeah. It's Moments. a little bit later before you see it, so don't expect to see it at 5.30. And actually, yeah. Brendan is going to actually show you something that answers that. It's yeah, I was, just to that's that. awesome. I was just want to talk about that. So when you're, are you need more time? I'm ready, I think. Okay, cool. Let's yeah. swap phones. Yes. He's going to plug into you. Thank you. As well, we need to take into account the topography. Ah, oh, it's a poor connection, Brendan. I made that mistake. So, Stupid LTE oh, right well, here. Yeah. I couldn't get on their Wi-Fi. I didn't think their Wi-Fi would actually let it out. But there's five watching. Hey guys, sorry about the poor connection who are watching. So, uh, I don't know if you guys recognize the colors on the lines, the colors up in the circles, they match up. So if you recognize the light blue, it's the sunrise, it'll tell you that. But just know that every minute it moves very quickly across the sky. So when you're saying you want it from, from some specific angle, you have to use a different part of the app that Brendan's going to show you. And what else I want to tell you about that? For instance, our moon here, if you're in Utah County, you're looking over Tempe, it's not going to be up for a long time. But if you go to the Salt Flats, exactly at that sunrise time, you see a crest. It looks awesome. I wish we could be there tomorrow night for the sunset, but... Because the horizon is flat. Horizon is awesomely flat, and it's so big and vast, you don't have anything in your way between there. The mountains are farther further back, and then it just got flooded yesterday. It was dry Thursday, and now flooded Friday. 
That's how crazy and fast it yeah, goes. Yeah, so to answer that question about the, the, with the mountains in our way, most of the time, if you do go out to the salt flats, then you will have a completely flat horizon and the moon rises nice and big. It's a great spot. So yes, it is like, well, two and a half hour drive from here. Yeah. For me, it's a couple hours in the Salt Lake area. And so totally worth the drive if you're planning for like a super moon type thing. Um, we were out there earlier, was it last year that we did the, the super moon rising? It was last wet. November. Yeah, it was wet last November too. And the super moon was rising and we actually had it rising over the water. And it looked like it was rising over the lake, but because it was so flat and it was just, it was just amazing. So um, Aaron had lined up his camera perfectly to what the AR says. So if you scroll all the way down towards the bottom and hit night AR, and that pulls up your um, your night AR, and so you can plan for the Milky Way, as you can see here. No matter where your orientation, um, your orientation, and so Aaron Aaron had lined it up and had the moon. As you can see, can you see the moon right there in the middle? It's that black oh, dot. That's there. right. <laughs> <laughs> so if so, say that's where you wanted the moon to rise. Actually, the horizon is right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so. Aaron had looked with his AR and lined up his camera right to that spot and then had set up the time lapse. Oh. And literally as the moon rose, he was like dead on. And so it was it was great. And so to me right there was the power of the, of, the, of just one pill in the app. It was pretty amazing. Um, I use this when I'm on location, like we just planned. Um, do you guys are familiar with the um, Garzman Pass area? Has anybody been to Bloods Lake before? Okay, so you know when, the, when you're looking straight east and it does <coughs> kind of tilt down the V at the end of the lake? So I was hoping to get the moon rise um, right where that V is, basically. And we went there the other night, and we planned, we planned the whole thing on the planner like the night before. I thought, oh, it's totally possible. If we went, like, it could work tomorrow. And so we went the next night. And then when we were there, we realized, okay, this is, it's not going to work quite this night because it rose on the other side of the hill to the right of the V. And so we actually were there on location, saw the AR, okay, sure enough, yeah, it's rising too far to the right. When is the good time to come back to this location? So we pulled the planner, and while we were there using both the night AR and the planner at the same time, on location, we were able to discover that it's gonna be like the first week of November that the moon will actually have a period around the first, the fourth. It's somewhere that's going to rise is. right in between those trees where the V comes down and possibly reflect in the water and be like an amazing shot. And so you just have to put the effort. Sometimes you actually have to go to the location and actually experiment with it. But now you have a very powerful tool that you can both plan, see on the planner, and go and use the AR. It's just it's a great combination. You can do almost anything with it. So uh, but it will tell you when it's impossible too, which is great. So sometimes you're trying to line up a shot like the sun. I want the sun to rise right here, and the app will literally tell you no. It's, there's no dates, it's just not possible. And so you can really get a good question of like, is this shot impossible or is it possible? If it's possible, what is the best time of year? The best time of year, it'll actually tell you the exact day and exact time because it knows the uh, sunrise and sunsets and stuff. So, any questions about um, the night AR and stuff? Everything is need to go low, right? It, it, don't get too crazy on mastering everything comfortable, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it takes uh, time. Uh, so yeah. I'll try on error first, okay. <laughs> but uh, we just want to make sure that you know that there are pills that you can use when you're in the field, and then mm -hmm. there's the plan. All right. Which you can use from home, and you can plan a shot anywhere in the world uh, from home. All right. So here's the pill. Okay. So in the GPS okay. coordinates okay. in Barcelona. Yeah. Yeah, because it's all based on the pin. Yeah. Okay. okay. Say you go to a location, you want the moon to rise right in the spot, and you're up there with your AR. Are you sliding it around to get to the right date, or? Yeah, you can actually, um, is that so it shows the, do you see the date and time right there right now? Okay. If you double tap, it brings it to, the, is that the current time? Yep. Yeah. Okay. But so, why is it saying 941 a.m.? Is that because it's connected to your? Yeah, yeah, we're going okay. to the lab yeah. so this time. Okay, so it knows the time on your phone right there. So it shows at the top corner there. So you're just going to move your finger back and forth to figure you can, out you what can date tap, it's You can be. tap on the right side like this. See, I'm tapping on the right side and it's moving the data. data. Oh, so you can do that just by single tapping, and then you can get more precise just by sliding it left and right as well. And when you're and single tapping, video. you're changing the whole day. Yeah, when you're tapping, same you're changing hour, the same, the same day, different day, same hour, 
And so you can All see right. where the moon positions itself differently in the different days you see it's just automatically changing. All right, and so that's the day you know it is. Yeah, and then you say, okay, so this is going to be half moon, I want it rising, and I want it like at this spot, let's see, the moon's going to be right Hold it above the horizon. You're right, right above the horizon. So basically, if it's like just above the horizon, one o'clock is where you want to be. So you want to make sure you're at that spot at 12.30, so you get there before the moon rises. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Not really a question, but this would be a cool feature if it doesn't exist, and that would be if I were on location to be able to tap and essentially take a picture or save that view so that six months from now when I'm thinking about where I want to revisit, yeah. I could then go back and see if things are lining up how I want and I don't have to drive there. You yeah. can do a screenshot so like, by pulling down the power and doing that and then it takes a screenshot. Are you thinking of something that recognizes? But I want to be able to reload that, that and then flip through the dates again. Oh, okay. You can't go through the planner. You can't even the planner? Yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. just not the, the AR. AR. Yeah, actually what you do with the planner, you you can go to the planner and show. Yep, okay. You just go to the planner. And uh, uh, the first thing you need to do is to place the red pin where you are, right? Okay. You can do it by... Uh, and because it, you're like, trying to work out the You're not going to get very good signal. Wi-Fi, yeah. Mm, oh, it's going on the Wi-Fi. It's wanting you to sign into the UVU Wi-Fi. But you're not going to get your AR feature where you have that picture and it lets you move that moon across that picture because it needs your compass information, your phone's orientation right. to recognize I that. I understand that. Okay. But I would like it to be just a static view because I've been to bridges and whatnot that if I could just pull up a static view and just flip through the dates, just, but you want the moon in the to future. swap in the screen where you see the moon at, yeah. it still wouldn't know where to put the moon in that sky because it wouldn't have your GPS coordinates or your orientation of the phone. Because if you tilt it up a little bit, the moon will be higher. Tilt it down a little bit, the moon will be, because it's just, it's reacting right. to where your phone is. And if you have so your image taken in static. would be, if I take a photo, it would capture not just the pixels, but also the orientation. Where, where I'm oriented and where I am. That'd be interesting to see if it's possible, yeah, but I don't know. You're talking about this feature here. Okay. There's it actually a feature awesome. in there because yeah. this would be new to me. It is oh, magic. magic. <laughs> it is magic. <laughs> okay, let's, let's get this done. Because this is a curious thing. I'm going to yeah. learn this. Yeah. yeah, no. Actually, the first thing that you do, you're in the spot. You need to uh, bring the ribbon where you are. Okay. You can tap on the plus here. Yep. Plus, and the first button you see on the left is the GPS. If I tap it, <coughs> The pin is placed where you are. Even if you don't have the map visible, even if you're offline, okay. the GPS will be right, right where you are. And now you can tap on save. Save. Okay. Save. And now you can save two things: a, a plan, which is a for idea. When you plan a trial, you have tuning spot and date and time. You save a plan. But when you're on a safe location, you save a point of interest. So you can tap on point of interest, new point of interest. Put a name here, like. Utah, Uni, an icon, whatever, <coughs> save. And now I can take a photo, for example, or upload on the top hand corner. Okay. Okay. You okay. can adjust photos or notes to, to that location. This could be awesome, Brendan. So you can yes. take, take a photo. So you remember the place, use it, or upload it from your camera roll. You have on a screenshot, for example, of the mental reality or whatever, you can upload it here. Camera roll. You can type notes, like idea of shots if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's it. And then from home, you can load that location. Imagine uh, using, using, this, using, the load. using the load function. So you're saying you can get a picture of that location as a reminder, but you can't get that picture to show up as a background on the augmented reality. No, no, that's the question we get. But okay. when you're uh, you want to load the, the red pin to that location, you just tap on load. And you have like five ways to, to well, move the red pin, you know, by an address, a plan, point of interest. You could tap on point of interest and select that location and the red pin will be placed where you save it and you can start planning a shot. But when you're on the spot and you want to know, okay, when the one is riding there and you want to use the AR view, <laughs> you have to find an option here. This is the, the button we use to tell the bills, okay, I want to shoot from here. I want the moon to be here, I want the sun to be there. Tell me when it happens. Okay. 
So, so what time of year, what date specifically? Date and time. Yeah. So you go to five, and then you need to select. You select moon at azimuth and elevation or sun at azimuth and elevation. The azimuth of the sun or the moon is the direction. Uh, <coughs> north is zero degrees. If the sun is uh, rising at the east, 90 degrees south, 180. And the elevation is just the elevation compared to your left on the horizon. So here you'll be like using the, for example, the moon at azimuth and elevation. And to find when it happens, you need to tell Rabil three things. First, the day range. So I'm going to tell Rabil's look for results starting today in two years. So I tap on date range, starting day today, and day two years. And now I need to tell Rabil's okay, where, where I want the moon to be. Do you guys I, understand what this this is? Yeah. So this is the no, this is the not gonna happen area. Yeah. Oh. The moon is never going to happen. If your shot's up in here, forget about it. Oh. Yeah, it's not if you're standing there, it's you look left, that direction. Try a different angle or a different location because this just isn't going to happen. Okay. Yeah. Oh. The moon's only going to be in these areas where it's more clear. Yeah. <laughs> this for the direction. You, you, have, you need to set the azimuth and the elevation of the moon. Azimuth and elevation, right? So for setting the azimuth, you can set it on the map. Like, okay, I want the moon to be in here. But also you can use the AR option here, which is very useful when you are on the spot. Mm -hmm. We were talking about this in the car. Yeah, not on the spot, planning. Yeah, you can go to AR and just tell, uh, okay, I want the moon to be here, or I want the moon to be there, or I want the moon to be there, or I want the moon to be uh, there. So then I tap on done, you see? Oh, I'm that's and super powerful if you understand what he's, what he's talking and about. I, 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 because I was telling you, right on the uh, where are you? west at more or less 10, 10 degrees of elevation. So you see, more or less west and elevation is more or less 10 degrees. And now I can tap on the search magnifying glass button you see on the top hand corner. And get all the dates and time the moon is gonna be in and the phases. Wow. And the phases yeah. and the light. Wow. The background color you see on the you know golden hour is uh, orange, light blue is blue is uh, daytime and nighttime is uh, uh, not dark. Now I can tap tap on phase and sort the table by moon phase. Like <laughs> have the moon phase first, the full moon first. But for the moon. You need to show it. You want to do a long distance shot. Uh, doing golden hour. So I just select this day here. And now I could go to the AR and double check, you know, more or less that the moon is, you know, where I want it to be. So this is a secret tool that we haven't explained to anybody almost. <laughs> because it's uh, for the azimuth, the one that we are review might be uh, wrong. So if you uh, use this tool, my advice is to just readjust the position of the azimuth on the map afterwards. You know, to make sure that the moon is right where you want it to be. But the elevation is going to be a very good estimation. Usually, the most difficult part is to, to know is the elevation angle, mm -hmm. one degree, two degrees. What's the elevation? I don't know. Uh, you can use the R to estimate it and to assess it. So this is uh, one way to, to work it out when you're on the spot. And what happens to me, I'm walking around and I see oh, photos everywhere and mm -hmm. when it happens, when it happens. So, and then you readjust you know, your, your, your photo with the planner and save it as a, a plan. So that's the tool that we use when we were there on the spot and say, okay, uh, in two months we go back to this location that's going to be where we want to be, and uh, we use the yeah. AR on that date to also verify that. So yeah, yeah. So, so Propils, there is two ways of working. One way is uh, actually three ways. First way, I am here. I want to shoot tonight. Tonight, what's going to happen? You don't go to the planner. You go to the pills. So I'm going to Milky Way pill, or night day pills. But then, when you are on the planner, either you know the date. You want to shoot? I want to shoot the sunset this weekend, or I want to shoot the next one. 
you need to set the date first and then understand where the movement is going to be. The third way is, okay, I want to shoot from here because I kind of move. I need to shoot from here. I like this uh, landscape. I want the moon to be there or the sun to be there. Tell me when it happens. Is when you use the find option. So like two ways. Yes. Just one follow-up. Um, like enhancement requests, is there an official mechanism that you guys take enhancement requests, like features that yeah. you think would be? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We get lots of uh, by mail. We send I mean, the list of features to, uh, actually we're gonna improve a lot the app uh, after Android. Sorry, Android. <laughs> the time it took us to develop it, but we just, yeah. two guys are working on this. Uh, yeah, they said about a year and a half working yeah. on the Android version. <laughs> so now that that's over and done, they can start working on better improvements. And yeah, if you have a, a, a suggestion, just send it to us. So I'll have a long list of things, cool things we're gonna improve. Awesome. There was questions about that. British so, again. Yeah. When you're using AR, yeah. it's based upon a magnetic compass that's in your phone. Yeah. When you're in Washington, the declination is 17 degrees east. When you're in Nova Scotia, it's 20 degrees west. That's a huge range of difference between what you're seeing and what is actual. Is there a way to put into the phone my magnetic variation is 17 degrees west, so that the AR will be more accurate. Uh, thank you, Herman. You, there was an option that allows you to select magnetic north or true north. Is it? I, well, so it, you know, the the map is all true north and true north, but the AR is based off the compass, so it must be a magnetic. Yeah. And if you're in Washington, the map and the compass differ by 17 degrees. Mm -hmm. If you're in Nova, Nova Scotia, they differ by 20 degrees. So that's what I'm asking you. Is there a way to put into photopills, I am at 17 degrees variation from true north? At the moment? No. Because that would then make the AR accurate. Uh, I'm going to jot down this question and ask expert my friend Herman. I'm not the developer so this is okay. beyond my are you by chance here tomorrow? I am. Cool. Alright we'll have some time to answer that too. But not much. Because uh, I've been playing with the AR uh, worldwide again. I'm gonna ask him and ask okay. him tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Yeah. Cool. Any other questions before I go on? Just a, one emphasis I wanted to put on there, if you're standing in Utah County and you think, I want the moon at the tip of Timpanogos, you actually go, AR, stand in your backyard, make sure you see Tim, put the moon right there, and then you hit the find button, and the find will say, any time in the next two years, the moon actually ends up there. Most likely, unless you go all the way up to Saratoga Springs, you might not get that angle where the moon actually is there. So your position where you're standing, you'll see zero results. Then you go a mile or two that way, and you get the right angle and you try it again and boom, it shows up. Now sometimes you can't actually go drive and you just want to do it from the planner and you can change it in the planner, in the find, and you can make all sorts of adjustments from here, change your location. So that's where this is really powerful. We'll teach you more about it tomorrow. But any other questions before I go into Milky Way planning? All right, awesome. Okay, we'll take 20 minutes on that. And then we'll go back to Raphael and we'll have a QA. and a When we do the Q&A, those of you who are with us for the workshop tonight, the paid workshop where we're going out and shooting the Milky Way, we're going to take <coughs> off. We're going to get going out there. Brandon and Rob will head out there early with you guys. And then anyone who wants to stay for the Q&A or just come with Raphael and I, will join afterwards. So just get ready for that. All right, so you guys, any of you have an iPad, the app on the iPad. So this probably looks more familiar to you. We're going to show you a different version. So this is the version of the pill in an iPad and on, I don't have any Wi-Fi right now, so it's not gonna show anything on the actual planner. But I wanna show you that I have my, I actually have my points of interest saved. All of these are points of interest only because it doesn't matter what date I actually saved them. It's just saying, okay, take me to Hoodoo City in Zion, which is a really cool rock formation just outside of the hop trailhead. And then if I go over here, I wanna load the goosenecks. Or for instance, we're going tonight to this trestle. The trestle is saved on here as trestle. It takes me to that location, boom, and now I can move the actual time around. So let me show you how I use this for Milky Way planning. And I want to see what I'm showing you, but I'll just stop looking up there. I'll look down here. 
First thing you need to know, if you want to do Milky Way photography, is whether the moon is going to be in your way. Because the best Milky Way is one that's not washed out by the light from the moon. Even at a tiny moon, less than 40% illuminated, you're still going to get some washing out. So you just want to find out what's going on with the moon first. Go into the moon app and pick a day. So right now, we're on September 22nd. The moon is actually, pre is actually present. And when is it present? If you see right here, this side of this part of the moon is all you need to know to plan Milky Way photography with the moon. Because of these icons right here, you can know what's happening. So for tonight, we actually have the moon getting our way just a little bit. So while the Milky Way, this time right here, does anyone know why it says 853 galactic core is visible? Because right now, it's actually up above the horizon. So why is it visible only at 853? Dark enough. Dark enough. The twilight periods of nautical, civil, and astronomical, when they happen after sunset and you wait for that sun to get far enough on the other side of the curvature of the Earth, it gets darker, darker, and darker. After astronomical twilight, once it's full darkness, that is the time. So it's saying, boom, twilight in this area is done at 853. You're not dealing with any twilight periods. It is full darkness. If there's no moon, if you don't have objects in the way, that Milky Way core is visible. And it's a time to take a picture. But then you are looking for the moon in this part, so you're saying, okay, how does this handle with the moon? At the very top, it's 12 a.m. Very bottom, it's 11.59 p.m. of that day. It's a 24-hour period saying, what's going on? It's September 22nd. So right here, I see sunrise 717. The moon rises a couple hours later. It actually is gonna set tonight at 9.10 p.m. When I have a chance, if this moon wasn't setting then and was setting before the Milky Way was rising or visible at 8.53, I had all that time from 8.53 to 11.26. Let's go back a day. See what's happened just yesterday? The moon actually set before the Milky Way became visible and you have that entire time to do photography of it. Let's go into a time period right after full moon because the only time you can take a picture of the Milky Way is right on the full moon, right on the new moon, right? Nah, it's actually, Many, many days throughout the entire month you can actually capture the Milky Way. Right here's a waxing dip, it's just about full. The moon is rising here and the moon sets at 3 or 4 a.m. So I can't see a set. It doesn't set right here yet. It's risen here and it's going on. It hasn't set yet. I check the next day. It's setting at 4 or 3 a.m. So this time period won't work. So let me try maybe after the, after the full moon. It keeps going through. There's a new moon period going towards here. It's just about full. Oh, interesting. Let's go back a couple days. All of these days have the same outcome. What's happening right here is that the moon set. This is the moon rise. This has become a visible period of the Milky Way. It's practically a full moon, but the moon doesn't rise until 1048 p.m. So that means it's actually still full darkness, no moon lighting it up, despite how big the moon will be once it gets here, it's not in the way. So you can look at this and go, that's an hour and a half that I have time that I can get out there. You're on location, you're ready to go, you have an hour and a half of Milky Way photography before it's over. And a day before that, it gets closer and closer. So any day, that right here, actually moon rose right before the Milky Way came up, so that got in the way. The further you go a couple days, you realize, you start getting these slivers of time that the moon's not in the way, despite the fact that it's practically a full moon. So before you give up and think, only that one week of the new moon I can go out for Milky Way photography, check and see what's going on. You saw how on the other side, I saw that it was actually in the way the entire time. But before the new view, see, we're heading towards, it's a waning gibbous, so we're heading towards new moon. You can see how it starts giving me opportunity. So there's about 20 plus days in a month that you can actually do Milky Way photography. You just might only get an hour, half hour, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. It's just kind of what you're willing to go work with. If you can get to an area and you're willing with 20 minutes, go for it, take a shot. So now that I know, let's say, let's go back to today calendar app. Let's go. Where the heck is today? Blue circle. I want to plan today. Now I know today's a good day. I have a window as soon as it sets at 9.10 that a little bit after that it gets dark enough. I have all the way till 11.28 p.m. So once this sets, this galactic core goes below the horizon. It says it's gone. The Milky Way is always up. It's always visible. There's parts of the Milky Way. Cassiopeia constellation. It's always visible. That's in the Milky Way arms. It's just the very thin arms of the Milky Way. Not as cool as the core of the Milky Way. So we want to focus on the core, it's telling us that information. So I know that tonight's a good night, but how do I know where should I stand and where I should go? That's where you go to the planner. So the planner, we want to set it up for day. At the very bottom, there's a clock. 
just double tap that and it'll set it for the exact time right there, right where you are. And your location, you can go change it to the GPS coordinate and boom, right here. Tonight we're going to the trestle. You can't see any of the picture on my phone. So not, this isn't a phone, it's a tablet, no Wi-Fi on it. But say you could see the trestle. Now you want to plan where should I stand at the trestle to get the most of that Milky Way. Have you guys ever slid this across and seen these lines? Yes. Yeah. Those are Milky Ways. That's that Milky Way telling you right there. That's the dots of the Milky Way arch. It's hard to visualize unless you look down in this corner here or at the top of your panel. If you're on a mobile device, you see all these panels at the top. You can see the Milky Way there and visualize it as you scrub it. So the Milky Way is straight up at this time and it's kind of arching. It's very low, probably hard to see, but you can see that shape of the Milky Way it takes. As the Milky Way goes overhead, it always has this shape. Let's go to a time. I'm going to load a plan. When you have a plan saved, it's very specific to that time and date of that location that I saved. So I planned a gooseneck shot June 3rd of 2016. Right here is when I want to get the shot. See this arch? Right here it shows me a 45 degree Milky Way. I know that the horizon is starting to see this part of the Milky Way. It arches up and it sees that and then it continues on. This part right here at the bottom is this part right here. The biggest part of the core is that biggest ball right here. You've even got a white line helping you know the exact direction that core is. So say you have Bryce Canyon, it's a really cool rock formation. You want the core to be almost at the end of it. You try and line that up with this white line to get that core kind of like featured by that rock formation, kind of pointing right at it. Makes it really cool. So then I look at this and go, hmm, I'm not standing in the right place. Let me lift my pin to use the lift pin feature, slide it over here, place it down. Oh, okay. Now it's right where I wanted it at this time. And I can still scrub it. What's it gonna look like if I wait till later tonight? My object's over there. This is pointing right that direction. It's right lined up. I wait a few more minutes. If I go another hour working with my camera, all of a sudden the Milky Way is over here. Missed it. And so how would I fix that? I just kinda gotta move my position and maybe get it lined up again. But you gotta see how fast that Milky Way moves away from you. It starts tilting up and it pulls to the right. Keeps moving from the east, then moves more south, and as it goes through the whole year, it's ending in the southwest. So tonight you'll see it vertical in the southwest. As you're looking at this later in the season, like right now you can see it gets really close to vertical and it recognizes vertical just by seeing those dots come together. This is for a slanted Milky Way. And now it's pancaking and landing, like much lining up exactly on top of each other. That's a vertical Milky Way look. We're gonna have that look tonight on our Milky Way and tomorrow night. So I come here in Planner to plan specifically what time should I be there? Where should I stand? Literally, what yard square should I stand on to get my Milky Way above the silo, above the trestle? The train tracks go like this. Can I get it to terminate right at the train track? I can line it up right here. I find out what day in the moon app, and then I find out what position in the planner. I'm running out of breath. Is that working out okay? You guys understand that? Okay, we have a half an hour left for Q&A. Could you actually do what you're saying? I said, will we remember? Exactly. <laughs> That's why you pay for a workshop, because you get a chance to actually do it with muscle memory. And muscle memory is the best memory. So we're going to go out there and do it personally, and then we're going to do it again the next night and really seal that. And then you always got YouTube videos from someone called Photo Lab Adventures that you can watch and remind yourself. So do you guys have any questions about that before I turn you over to Q&A with Raphael? doing star trails and other stuff at this time. If we talk about photo bills for hours, yeah, that's what tomorrow for. Yeah. So how many of you here are not going out tonight, did not pay for the workshop, or not planning on going out tonight? Okay. We don't want you to feel left out when everyone leaves. <laughs> but the rest of us in here are going to go in a half an hour so that we can get to a location in time for Milky Way photography. You three, consider it this awesome opportunity to have no other, introdu no other confusing distractions and having just time with Raphael. You three, you come right up front, ask all the questions you want. We'll start that in a half an hour. So first we'll do Raphael's last discussion about anything he wants, really, because any of it's good. And then we'll go, we'll take off. Um, Raphael, can I borrow your phone? Yes. Okay. I want to show you guys how to get there. 
All of you drove yourselves, and so that's a situation that is harder than when we have workshops with buses where we just, you know, carpool you guys over there. We don't want you guys to get lost. That is the worst. So, everyone take your phone out and add my phone number to your phone. And I will turn off YouTube, I guess, because I'm on live right now. I don't want to give the world my phone number. <laughs> hey, Aaron, how's it going? All right, I'm going to put that down for a second. Bye, YouTube. Hope you enjoyed it. It was kind of poor connection. Sorry. We probably have one or two still listening. You guys are very loyal friends. And...